He who is by nature not his own, but another's man, is by nature a slave. Aristotle. By the 1540s, the encomienda system and the colonization of the New World were in full swing. Many Spaniards had turned a blind eye to the conquistadors and their repeated transgressions in the name of Christianity, and a good number supported the conquistadors' actions. On April 16, 1550, the royal order at Madrid suspended all new conquests because of the question, what was an Indian? The debate was to be held in Valladolid, Spain. Two political enemies, Bartolomé de las Casas and Juan Ginés de Sepulveda, rose up to debate with one another and the Spanish crown the morality of colonization in relation to the New World and its inhabitants. Sepulveda opted in favor of the encomienda system and the forced Christian conversions, while Las Casas supported an end to the practice and the systematic eradication of the indigenous people and their culture. By the end of the debate itself, there was no definitive conclusion or winner, but it set a precedent for future debates. Through the discussion of rights and the passing of new laws regarding the treatment of native peoples, the Valladolid debate pioneered the way for future moral and political discussions concerning colonialism and Christianity. Friar Bartolome de las Casas, the Bishop of Chiapa, believed that the Indians were human beings, had immortal souls, and were capable of enjoying freedom and being educated. Las Casas claimed that the Indians could be compared to people of ancient classic civilizations and that they were rational beings whose souls could be saved if he worked to educate them. He later became recognized as the protector of the Indians and his work led to some reforms in both the policy and mindset of the Spaniards. Juan Gines de Sepulveda was a famous humanist and scholar of Greek and Latin who had translated some of Aristotle's works. He used some of the philosopher's statements to justify the treatment of the Native Americans. He stated that the Indians were natural slaves set aside by nature to serve masters who were born for a rich and comfortable life. He and other conquistadors believed that they worked too hard to gain riches and slaves to relinquish them. They also brought up how some soldiers were treated by the Indians to defend their stance. Both men had strong arguments for their case, and while neither side was given the title of winner, their assertions earned them a place in history as brilliant debaters and pioneers of European ethics in relation to the sphere of politics and government. The encomienda system was an institution designed by the Spanish crown in an attempt to establish the societal position of the indigenous population. An encomienda granted a specific number of indios to a conquistador living in a certain area. The Native Americans were put under the protection of their master and forced to work for them. In return, the receiver of the grant was expected to protect the Native people and teach them Christianity. This arrangement was often cruel and exploited the Native people, and since the encomienda system was an undefined form of slavery, it was the catalyst for the argument over the treatment of the Native Americans. In 1542, the new laws of the Indies were passed, which eradicated the encomienda system. This sparked a lot of tension in the Spanish world, but it wasn't until the Valladolid debate that the establishment was weakened and viewed in a new light. It did, however, take a very long time for the system to be completely void of meaning and import. On the other hand, the encomienda system, to which Las Casas had dedicated countless days and nights to fight against, continued until the 18th century, at which time it was formally abolished. Either way, the encomienda system's inevitable downfall was largely in part to Las Casas and the moral groundwork he laid during the Valladolid debate. We can estimate very surely and truthfully that in the 40 years that have passed, with the infernal actions of the Christians, there have been unjustly slain more than 12 million men, women, and children. Las Casas. The conquistadors terribly mistreated the native people, causing them physical and emotional trauma. For example, some of the conquistadors cut off the noses and hands of Indian prisoners. Noted for his corruption and brutality, Governor de Guzman abused his captured slaves so much that the Indians refused to have children to spare them from the ordeal. 
Other Spaniards trained their hounds for hunting by releasing them to kill the Indians. Juan Gines de Sepulveda was an advocate of the encomienda system because he believed that the indigenous people's history of cannibalism and human sacrifice was savage and prevented them from being able to properly govern themselves. He said this behavior was unfit for humans and they needed a European master to rule over them. Sepulveda also supported his side with the biblical quote, go out into the highways and hedge and compel them to come in, Luke 14, 23. He believed that the conversion of the Native Americans to Christianity fully justified the wars in America. On the contrary, Bartolome de las Casas said that rather than qualifying as Aristotle's natural slaves, the Indians met his requirements for the good life. He illustrated the genocide committed by the Christian conquistadors during the debate, thus creating an environment of awareness that the people of Europe had not seen before. By shedding light on the actions done in the name of faith, Las Casas and Sepulveda introduced for the first time that the idea of morality and politics could be intertwined. The 18th century rounded out the moral argument and cast it in terms that still carry meaning today. The actions and topics of the Valladolid debate continued to be relevant in European society and the legacy of the debate can still be seen today through Spanish and indigenous history and culture. The introduction of ethics into a political debate forever changed the European notion of colonialism and the role religion plays in it. The preoccupation over Spanish character continued as the people began to accept Las Casas' idea that the mistreatment of the Native Americans was not warranted. The debate over the ethics of Spanish expansion and the treatment of the Native Americans continued on into the next centuries while the Spanish conquest began to be viewed in an unfavorable light. Although it was after the fact, new laws were made to exercise the evils of the conquest, which granted the Native Americans some rights, but still maintained some aspects of Christianization. The general viewpoint was changing though, and the widespread view of colonization in the New World began to shift more empathetically. This begs the question of whether or not the average Spaniard was concerned with non-European dealings and to what extent those viewpoints changed the general populace's opinions. The Valladolid debate will forever be remembered and honored in history as the origin of the intersectionality between human morals and political climates.